Hi, thank you. I'm Sarah and I'm from the Department of Neurology and um, we are doing a study right now, a, a pilot study on preclinical Alzheimer's disease and driving. And right now we're looking at uh, a specific problem. So we're looking at how we can objectively measure driving performance continuously over time to identify when driving decline occurs in older adults. And we want to do this in a cost-effective and minimally invasive manner. So probably the first question from a lot of folks is what is preclinical Alzheimer's disease? So preclinical Alzheimer's disease is pre-symptomatic. So this is what Alzheimer's disease looks like in the brain before there are any symptoms. So before people are having any cognitive changes, any memory loss, they are already showing these signs of Alzheimer's. So there are protein deposits in their brain. And we can tell that people have these. Um, we are able to do lumbar punctures and analyze their cerebrospinal fluid. We can also do different types of imaging and we're able to tell what types of proteins are there as well as what the concentrations are um, and basically say whether, whether they have preclinical Alzheimer's disease or not. So we are looking at whether there are subtle systematic changes that would combine to cause changes in driving performance. So we want to look at whether individuals with preclinical AD are at greater risk of unsafe driving than those without AD-related brain changes. So we have individuals in our study both with preclinical Alzheimer's disease based on these biomarkers and people without. So uh, another piece of the problem obviously is just <coughs> older adult driving. Um, we know that there are a lot of older adult drivers out there and that is going to be ballooning along with uh, the uh, along with uh, doubling in the next 40 years. So right now we're looking at how we can help with both safety and health. So right now there are two current ways that we evaluate driving. Um, one is through road tests and one is through driving simulators. They both have some strengths. Um, obviously they they have a lot of face validity. This is what people are used to doing. Um, it's what we do when we get our driver's license. Um, the simulator also has some added features because we can add in unsafe situations that we would not be able to do in real life. Um, however, there are also a lot of limitations to those. Because it's such a controlled environment, it's also an unnatural environment. And so what we're wanting to do is look at how we can have a natural environment uh, to be able to study older adult driving. So what we did was we enter this little chip. It gets plugged into an individual's car. So they come over to our center on the medical campus. We plug it in their car. It takes about a minute. Um, so it's very low burden for our participants. They quickly forget that it's there, uh, which I can attest to as someone who's piloted it in my own car. Um, and then the data goes over to our friends at Olin and um, they are able to take care of the data there. So what does this provide for us? It provides a number of different things. So we can look at how many times the person has had a heartbreaking incident, how many times they've accelerated too quickly, um, how many times they've been speeding, how many miles they drive, um, how many minutes they're idling. We can look at all sorts of different data, but along with this, we also get latitude and longitude. And this information is sent every 30 seconds while a person is driving. So it gives us just a wealth of information. So this is kind of the, I guess, sort of the most raw piece of the information. Um, we have what we call breadcrumbs, which are those little 30 second increments. So we can map that out. We can see basically exactly where this person was. Um, so that's sort of the raw piece. But what we can get from that, um, one thing that we're looking at is driving area. So how far do people drive within a given month? So we can look, so over these next three months, so the second month and the third month. So you can kind of see it's similar, but it changes. So this is for one individual and um, we can see over time how things change. Obviously month to month, we're not gonna see a lot of difference, but looking longitudinally, we're looking at what that, that will look like over time. Um, additionally, we were able to pinpoint what we would consider to be a primary location. So how can we look at this mapping information and find out where is somebody most often without having to know the address of where they work or the address of where they live? 
So we were able to look at um, trip starts and places where there's a concentration of trip starts. Um, then we were able to create a polygon around that and figure out what the center of that polygon is. And in most cases, just from our spot checks, because this is a pilot project, um, these landed right in residential areas, which we are figuring are, this is the person's home. Um, some people also have two of these primary locations. We assume maybe that the other is a work location, a partner's home, um, so we're able to see that. Then from that information, we're also able to see how far are people driving from their primary locations. So we can see, are people over time, are these individuals who have preclinical Alzheimer's disease, is their driving space getting smaller? Are they self-restricting where they're driving? So we're able to look over time, naturalistically, at how these individuals are driving. Um, we'll also be looking at some of those other safety issues as far as hard braking and that sort of thing. Um, but as far as the mapping piece, we can look at where, where they're driving. Um, additionally, we can look at just sort of a mean of how far on average are they driving. So these three points represent places that, or sorry, the average of how far they're driving from their primary location. Um, and again, over time, we can look to see, does that get closer to what their home or their primary location is? Um, so over time, we're looking at what those changes are. Uh, right now in our pilot program, we are looking at, um, at individuals for two years. We're hoping to look at them for another five after that. Um, and this is 20 individuals. Uh, we also currently have a full study that is right now at 150 individuals, and we're doing annual driving evaluations with those folks. So we can also look as we go to compare these two different tools, um, and this is a really innovative way to be looking at driving that we haven't been able to find any research that other places are doing yet. So that is, that's our project in a nutshell. So um, if there's any questions, my email is at the bottom, and um, I'm happy to take questions later. So thanks.